Good evening, everyone. My name is Jasper Bray. I just finished my third year studying composition and theory at the Blair School of Music at Vanderbilt University. I'd like to clarify first off a point in the program. The title of this piece is not, in fact, two movements. It is two moments, which are in one movement. <laughs> Each of these moments is inspired by or in response to a quote from the 20th century postmodern American poet Richard Brodigan. He had something of an observational sensibility. A lot of his writings constitute a sort of piling up of cultural illusions that it's not quite clear what they add up to. And in many of his works, this piling up of images and juxtaposition to create a mood without necessarily an end in mind takes more of a metaphysical turn. And the two poems that I've excerpted um, in my programmatic backing for this work um, come from poems like that. The first comes from a poem called The Harbor, and the quote, which is reprinted in the score and I will relate now, is, fish swim between our ribs and seagulls cry like mirrors to our blood. And so in this section you're going to hear some low undulations like waves and then above there are some vaguely bird-like cries that have this winding movement that I thought sounded also like fish, so a synthesis of the two characters in this scene. The second of these sections, um, and the final one, comes from a poem called Comets. There are comets connected to chemicals that telescope down our lungs to burn out against the air. And so this section was built on this conceit of constant explosion, um, constant collapsing and forming something new, and there's a a central theme that kind of sounds like a soaring comet, so if you listen for those things, um, that might illuminate the idea somewhat. Um, I'd like to thank the Texas Tech Wind Quintet, who've done a really phenomenal job with what I found to be a very hard, dif hard piece, but they, they play it wonderfully, and I, I hope you enjoy it.
Good evening, everyone. I'm Matt Majorkurth. I just finished my sophomore year at the University of Tulsa studying composition. Um, the following piece is called Off Center. Um, so, like, around the past semester, I've kind of been going through, like, various periods of certain hardships and whatnot, and then, but eventually having kind of moved past those, I've found myself, like, um, moving closer and closer towards centeredness. Um, <laughs> however, I'm not there. Um, uh, this piece basically explores um, or kind of um, my desire to uh, achieve that and then the, the interruptions thereof, um, of which there are many. 
Um, I would love to extend a huge thanks to Ricky and the quartets, and I'm not Ricky. Um, uh, they've been an absolute joy to work with this whole week, um, and I think we've really struck a, a marvelous rapport. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> All right, enjoy. Thank you. 
Hi, everyone. I'm Niels Vorosky. I wrote this next piece, uh, which is called Unity of Question. Let me just tell you a couple things that were going through my mind when I was writing this piece. Uh, the first thing is I was thinking this is basically what you'd call a slow movement, uh, for lack of it, even though it's just one movement, not for a larger piece. But it's a slow movement. Um, and I was thinking I wanted to write a slow introduction and then some fast music, music afterwards to go with it. So it would be like I'd be asking a question with the slow movement and then maybe answering it or trying to answer it with the fast music. However, as I kept writing the slow introduction, I started to get more and more into the asking the question part of it and realizing that maybe it would be more interesting if I didn't answer the question. And actually, maybe I couldn't answer the question even if I wanted to. So I just decided not to write the fast Part, and it turned into a slow <laughs> movement. So that's the question part of the title. Um, there's also the unity part. So one of the things I was thinking about is uh, like what makes music unified or coherent? Um, and there are like two things I think about with this. The first is that when you listen to music, it's like very satisfying to listen to music. But it's also, there's some part of it that's dissatisfying that makes you want to hear it at any moment in a given piece. You want to be a little dissatisfied. To, makes you want to hear what's coming next. So there's this sort of duality between the satisfaction of listening to music and the dissatisfaction that makes you keep listening for what's coming next. So I was sort of trying to play around with this idea. Um, yeah, and I want to give a huge thanks to this group for playing it. Um, it's been great working with them. One of the awesome aspects of this program has been how my idea of the piece has changed just from working with them over the course of the week to the point that I feel it's like now they're piece too, not just mine, which is really great. Um, so thanks guys, and hope you guys enjoy. Thank you. 
Hello. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Patrick Gutman. Next fall, I'll be attending the University of California, Los Angeles for my doctorate. Um, the idea of the piece came from the opening two notes. Uh, I became obsessed with them, and so, logically, I wrote about it. And it became sort of a fun game uh, of interplay between the musicians, of passing off this idea, and then, as the title suggests, interrupting that. And so uh, it became sort of a fun uh, play on that and lots of color. And the piece sort of just developed and grew into its own um, entity. So I would just like to thank the Ginkgo String Quartet so much for uh, so much time and energy into this piece. It's been a privilege. And without further ado, I hope you enjoy Pardon the Interruption.